Well, howdy there! Come on in to the Laramie K. Optician Arts Dance Studio. Grab a beer, grab a partner, and we're going to learn how to do the high curve two-step. I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we have a very special guest with us. This is Jason Abbott. He just took over the Atlanta region for Santinelli, and he happens to live just a couple hours away. So I invited him to the training center. I had just gotten in this, the Lexi Trend 8, and we went over some of the features, but I'm gonna let Jason tell you about which ones those are. The Lexi Trend 8 is one of our flagship units. It is available with a drill or without a drill. This particular unit does not have a drill today, but that's okay because today John's gonna focus mainly on telling you about the high curve wheel that's included in this machine. Right, and we just spent the day, I think it's about one o'clock now, we started about nine, and we dug into this machine. Um, we both learned all kinds of cool stuff, and yep, I am going to go ahead and dig in and show you the high curve feature and the step bevel, and how that can make you a much better optician. I invited Jason here to the training center. Well, first of all, because he's new and he's the rep for our area, so I wanted to say hello and get to know him. The other part was I have never had an edger that had these two features. So I thought, wow, it'd be great to have a Santinelli guy here when I learned about them. Two features, high curve and step bevel. High curve, it's a feature and it's all about the tracer. It's about the tracer's ability to gather spatial awareness. Can the tracer capture frame curve alone, or can it capture the frame curve and the frame angle? Let's take a really quick look at those two ideas or those two terms. All right, you guys know me. I never hide anything. I am sure as hell not a robotics engineer or designing uh, technologically driven equipment. NASA is not calling me on the phone very much, offering me work or anything. This is my understanding of it. The frame angle and frame curve terms come from Santinelli. Their editors, different companies may very well use different language. Again, just my take on this. That term, the numbers that I just showed you, frame curve, is basically the curve of the eye wire. Think of it as the frame base curve. All of our lenses have a base curve, matches to the back curve, that bevel, think of that curve. It's just the same concept carried over to a frame. It is independent, eye wire to eye wire, but kind of sort of needless to say, they're always the same right to left in a given frame. Now frame angle, we simply think of as, well, wrap. That's all there is to it. If we think of a frame curve, we think of it being independent, measured perhaps from the center of that out. We have a radius, that would be correct. And then for the frame itself, the entire frame angle, perhaps from the center here, capturing that entire curve. See, what happened was in the, if you have an older machine or you have a tracer that doesn't have the capability of tracing a really high curve, well, then you traced one eye wire independently. You turn the frame, set it in, particularly on those horizontal style tracers like those right there and you just trace one eye wire because it could never make that curve in that turn. Now it turns out that the ability of the tracer to make that high curve trace and gather all up information does one thing. 
and that is that it does a frame PD, or in particular, a frame DBL compensation. When it knows the full frame angle, and it's very, very high, a big, heavily wrapped frame, it does a little fudging on your PD, frame PD relationship to kind of bring this in. If you've got that high curve and you bring it in, you're in a sense bringing the PDs closer together so it messes with those numbers. Now the Wicked Cool, really nice to have, make your life a whole lot easier feature, is the Step Bevel. Now all of you are good optician works opticians. It's about reducing the interference between the bevel and the bezel. You all know that a lens has a bevel and the eye wire has a bezel. This basically works best, helps you out the most in your higher minus and your higher curves. These two can work together in that way. These are generally your plastic sport frames, your heavy sunglasses, your safeties, plastic safeties, and your anything plastic, big, heavy, thick plastic. It, it particularly addresses that point right there on the frame. Now, applying the step bevel to the entire circumference of the lens is going to make your life easier, but it, it, it tends to be when you're trying to assemble a higher minus lens in a heavy curve in those big, thick plastic, that that's the area that tends to give you the problem. Well, it simply boils down to better finishing work. The lens with a step bevel, and I'm about to show you this, finishes better and inserts into the frame much easier, greatly reduces the amount of heat you need to use for adjustment, and it stops that splaying out of the temples, it brings them in, and I'll show you this in just a second. Remember that our edger is always looking to optimize the frame curve and the lens curve match, or in other words, the bevel-bezel relationship. That's why when we was talking about don't try to make a job fit if you have a poor base curve, frame curve choice, you can't really override that. Uh, you can't override it using base curve changes where you might be able to do it with a better edger. Let's hit the bench and look at high curve, just a couple of numbers there really, and then look at what a step bevel looks like. A little hard to see, but well, I'll show you anyway. Here is an example. This is a very common or generic men's middle frame, which when traced has a frame curve of 5.7 and a frame angle of 6.0. Now, when we switch to our heavily wrapped Maui Jim sunglass, look at the results. Our frame curve is 4.8 and our frame angle has jumped to 18.3. So that's high curve, the ability of the tracer to trace a highly wrapped frame, feed that information to the software, and the software makes some tweaks to the frame PD. Now let's take a look at step bevel. Again, I never had an edger that had that feature, but boy, oh boy, I sure do wish that I had. I would have put it to use quite often. Super hard to see here, but here you go. Anyway, the lens on the left has the step bevel. The lens on the right does not. A much better way of seeing it, if you will, is from the edger confirmation display. This is the bevel profile in the default or no step bevel setting, where this is with a step bevel. If you caught the opening, I said we were gonna do the high curve two-step, and there it is. A 0.3 clip off of that corner, and then the full step or ledge that allows the frame to clear. It might not seem like much, but those two small differences add up to a huge change when assembling and adjusting those sport, suns, and safeties. All right, hot off of the edger, we have our right lens, which we did not do a step bevel on, and the left one that we did do a step bevel on. <clears throat> now, I had mentioned that it tends to be this kind of upper temporal corner that gives you all your trouble. Obviously, the relief of that extra cutout helps all the way around the eye wire, but 
Let's see here. We gonna... Yeah, it's going to take some heat to get that going in there. So let's crank that up. So this is this is what happens. It tends to want to kind of hang up right in these corners. Ugh, no, it's just fighting every inch of the way. It's the conflict of that bevel ledge back here, which gives you this little tiny lip out here. I'm going to try heating up that corner a little bit more. See if I can get it to pop over it. Oh, man, oh, man. That is really hard. Okay, one down. Let's do our left now. That's pretty good. Do our left. Okay. And that was the one with the step. Here is the frame in roughly good standard alignment and without lenses. Here is the frame after lens insertion, where the right did not get a step bevel and the left did. That's it. That is what step bevel is all about. That is straight off the edger, into the frame warmer, and after lens insertion. Could you fix it? Well, yeah, sure, but you're going to be forcing things. You're going to use a lot of heat in order to get it right. So it might make it a little bit clearer how much of a difference that that makes. All right, that is high curve and step bevel two features of the Lexi Trend 8. I truly believe step bevel underutilized. If you have it, by all means, experiment with it. Makes finishing a whole lot easier, makes your finished work look a whole lot better, and most important, sets you apart from your competition. If you're watching me on Facebook, please give us a like. Watching me on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and make absolutely certain that every lens that you're applying high curve and step bevels to comes from Laramie K. I will see you again next week. <laughs>